<laughs> Yay! Hi, I'm Clay Carlino, and I'm not actually a prop designer, but I am working on a prop. Hi, Wesley. <laughs> Say hi, Wesley. So this is a project that I'm working on. It's a prop for a video, but it's going to be an old luggable computer, but it's going to be kind of a Frankenstein computer. And sure, I could fake it, but I really, really wanted to make a luggable computer. So I bought this on Craigslist. It won't boot up and the screen didn't work and uh, the keyboard was broken. What I'm doing is I took all the guts out. See, I've installed a uh, seven inch LCD screen, but I actually want there to be room for a cassette drive right here. I've rigged up this old computer power supply to deliver 5 volts to a Raspberry Pi right here and then deliver 12 volts to the screen right here. The Raspberry Pi needs a USB keyboard. I've taken apart the keyboard, but I got from a second-hand store a uh, little mini USB keyboard which I have hacked in here. And then I took this other keyboard and I've also added in the buttons here, but because it's got the original housing, it will still be able to close up against the screen for when it's in travel mode. This is going to make an 80s style luggable computer and I'll be able to get on the internet and use Raspbian software, even though it's completely impractical, it'll be fun. The big problem that I have now is I've got way too many wires back here and most of them are unnecessary. This right here is the wire that came with the monitor. This is a composite video cable that I made. Notice that this end has four contact points. That's important to look for. And if you go back to that video that I did about a composite video cables for the Raspberry Pi, you can see what the necessary wiring is for one of these. I'm going to make a much smaller jack to go from the Raspberry Pi to the video, and I'm also going to replace this massive bunch of wires over here with something that just goes from these contact points here to the video and to the power. This is the Walkman that I bought, and I cut the front here where the, uh, where the cassette door is, and most notably, I've got these styrene pieces which engage the existing buttons so that you can push them and they activate. Now I'm adding these, these pieces that I'm building out of this piece of acrylic tube that I got at a creative reuse store here in Pittsburgh. These button faces make it much easier to press these buttons. As you can see, that clicks in. That works. And I've put on an eject. So right now, what I'm trying to do is hook an amplifier into the computer so that I'll have sound. This is the amplifier out of an old set of computer speakers. It uses a 9 volt power supply. This old computer power supply outputs 12 volts and 5 volts. This is a variable resistor. I have wired it up so that it is now acting like a voltage divider. And I've already set the slider to where it creates just about exactly 9 volts. This was a cheap amplifier to start with, but it's, it's all rigged up. I've got the speaker wire running through here and then going in here to this speaker right there. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> I'm never going to be able to monetize this video because I'm playing that music, but I don't care because that music is success. Woo! I have placed the cassette drive into the front of the unit and I've notched out the edge of the housing here so that you can comfortably press the buttons. I've also placed the speaker 
and uh, the old amplifier that I put in here sounds absolutely horrible. But notice, there's an empty spot right here, and I feel like what it needs is an old analog gauge. So I'm going to take the gauge out of this, and I'm going to wire it in here so that I can make the needle go up and down and just make it look cool. My amplifier sounded really, really bad. I figured out what the problem is. Apparently, by having both the amplifier and the Raspberry Pi powered off of the same power supply, it was causing feedback. I'm going to put in the transformer for the amplifier. I'll still have one switch, that'll turn on the power, and then I'll split off where AC will go in here and AC will go into that transformer and then that will deliver power to the amplifier and the power supply here will deliver power to everything else. I've now got a pointless power gauge and here watch this this is awesome. When I turn on the brightness Look at that. Got LEDs implanted inside here and inside here, and you can see the little needle jumped. We're getting to a point where I can cut out the faceplate and I can paint things. Then we will have a, a pretty awesome luggable computer. All right, I got the primer on. It's actually looking really, really sweet. I'm getting excited. So here it is. This is my retro styled luggable computer with a raspberry pi in it i'll be able to emulate an old commodore 64 on here here take a look i've got it so that it's got a cassette drive and the wheels turn the buttons work i've got some lights down here on the keyboard see when i turn on the lights you can see the uh the little gauge move so you have to have your device storage, and what I mean by that is this is literally where I store a mouse so that I can actually use the, uh, the Raspberry Pi software. There it is. Yeah, everything folds up the way that it originally did. If, if you like this video or you like any of my other videos, please feel free to subscribe. Click the thumbs up button. Other than that, Knowing that you do not have to be afraid to try and take an old luggable computer and turn it into a Raspberry Pi retro machine. This is Clay Carlino telling you to be brave. Yay!